in a faraway island a long time ago. Four groups of settlers from four kingdoms tried to claim the island as a part of their territory. Hence started a battle that shall be remembered for ages, for it was not a battle of swords, rather a battle of words. A battle that was won using two words, Uga Buga. The kingdom that won the battle goes on to claim the island which we now know as Gulmandi. Do you have what it takes to win this battle of wit and wisdom? Then get ready to know the rules. Uga Buga is a four player game where each of the players will represent each of the four kingdoms. Every kingdom will have its unique language which is to be set by the player. The players need to stick to the language he or she has created otherwise there are penalties. So get ready to make your own language. It has to be one or two unique words that has no meaning in any other language. Keep in mind that the battle of Uga Buga took place at a time when there were no languages that we use in current day and age. So what are the components of this game? Let's have a look at it. We have the 16 playing cards. If we have a look at them, you can see there are 4 cards for food, 4 for clothes, 4 cards for fire and 4 cards for shelter. Uh, next we have the 40 kingdom coins. You can see they are distinguished by their uh, symbol and color. So there are uh, 10 coins for each of the kingdoms. Next we have the platform where the coins are to be placed once a kingdom gets a match. We'll get onto it later. And then we have the 5 reward plates, 5 punishment plates, 7 match winner cards and the manual. So how do we play Uga Buga? To begin, choose your kingdom symbol from the 4 that there are in the game. After that, collect the 10 kingdom coins of your kingdom symbol and then keep it to yourself. You will win the game once all 10 of your kingdom coins are on the platform. Next, each of the four kingdoms will be declaring their language. It has to be one or two words which has no meaning, so it has to be completely made up. Say, player 1 has declared his language to be um, Pimzu. <laughs> he needs to stick to his word Pimzu for the rest of the game. Now, place the platform at the center of the four players. The five reward plates, five punishment plates, and the seven match winner cards are to be placed beside the platform. The reward and punishment plates are to be shuffled and then placed facing downwards. Next, the 16 playing cards will be shuffled and distributed by one of the four players, let's say player 1. The objective for each of the players is to match four cards. If you match four food cards, you get two points. If you match for fire cards, you get 3 points. If you match for cloth cards, you get 2 points. And if you match for shelter cards, you get 4 points. That's the highest. The points you win are the number of coins you can add to the platform. Also, if you have at least 3 coins already in the platform, then you can also subtract the coins off of your opponent, one opponent at a time though. Okay, so in this game, we have what we call match 1 and match 2. So one of these four players will eventually match four cards of their preference. That's what we are calling match 1. And after that, the rest of the three players will continue the round and go for a second match. That is match 2. So it goes like this. Round 1, match 1, match 2. Then round 2, match 1, match 2. And then round 3, match 1, match 2 and so on and so forth. So, once all the players get 4 cards each, the person who shuffled the cards, player 1, will be giving off one of his 4 cards to the person next to him. When player 1 gives off one card, he needs to say out the language that he has set for his kingdom. What was it? Pimzu. If player 1 forgets to say his language, Pimzu, while giving off the card or says it wrong, then he will lose a kingdom coin from the platform provided he has any coin in the platform. Next, the player who received the card, player 2, will be giving off one card to the person next to him, player 3, uh, saying out the language of course of his kingdom, whichever he has set. The objective is to match 4 cards of the player's preference. Once a player matches 4 cards of his preference, he will, on his turn, declare Uga Buga. 
instead of the kingdom language and then show the four cards the player has matched. Based on which four cards the player has matched, he will gain the kingdom coins on the platform. Or like I said, remove coins of an opponent if he has at least three coins already in the platform. Once that is done, the other three players will continue the game till a second player matches four cards. After that, the second player will also declare Ooga Booga and show the matched cards and add the kingdom coins to the platform or remove coins of an opponent if he has at least three coins in the platform. The cards will now be shuffled and distributed again for round 2 to be done by the player who was next to player 1 that is player 2. On the next round player 3 will shuffle the cards and then the next round player 4 will shuffle the cards and so and so forth. The first player to have 10 coins on the platform after match 1 and match 2 of a round wins. Now hold on it's not going to be that easy for we got some twists let's have a look at them. Alright number 1. Once a player matches the cards on match 1 and declares Ooga Booga, he will be getting the 7 match winner cards, which he will stack up on a pile. Next, every time he gets passed on the playing card in his turn, he will pass on the card to the player next to him, say his kingdom words, Pimzu, like always, and then put down one of the 7 match winner card from the pile. If the second match lasts beyond 7 turns, all the players, except for the first match winner, will lose 1 coin each from the platform, provided they have coins in the platform. Alright, number 2. Matching 4 fire or shelter cards won't be easy. So players may tend to match 4 clothes or 4 food cards to earn coins easily. So there are special rewards for those who can match fire or shelter and punishments for those who matches food or cloth cards. If you have matched 4 cloth cards or 4 food cards, you need to randomly pick one of the 5 punishments and execute the punishment. So what are they? So you have matched a food or a cloth card and then you have to randomly pick one of these 5 um, punishment plates. So if you get this, the symbol means you have to sing using your kingdom language for at least 15 seconds. If you are not able to do that, then you instantly lose one kingdom coin from the platform. So for example, if player 1 uh, gets uh, this plate, this punishment plate, his kingdom word, what is it? Pimzu. He has to sing a, sing a song uh, using the word Pimzu. So next, uh, if, if the player gets this, this means you got to scream your kingdom words in the next match. If you got this punishment plate in match 1, then you got to scream your words on match 2. And if you got this on match 2 of the round, then you have to scream your kingdom words in match 1 of the next round. If you fail or forget to scream and the opponents notice that, then you instantly lose one coin from the platform. Alright, if you get this plate, this means you have to add one coin to one opponent on the platform, while this means you have to add one coin of two opponents on the platform. You need to decide whose coin you want to add. Of course, go for opponents who are weak or have less coins in the platform. Now, if you have matched four shelter cards or four fire cards, bravo! You need to randomly pick one of the five reward plates and earn the reward. So, what are the rewards? Okay, in this case, you can make one player sing in his or her language for 15 seconds. If they fail to sing, they lose a coin from the platform. While with this reward plate, you can make two players sing in his or her language for 15 seconds. This for sure will be hilarious. Alright, next, if you get this reward plate, you do not need to say your kingdom words on the next match. While with this reward plate, you can remove one coin of one opponent from the platform. Of course, choose the opponent who has the highest number of coins in the platform. And with this reward plate, you can remove one coin of two opponents from the platform. This surely is to your advantage. Once you get the reward or punishment plate and do what's being told on the plate, you have to submit it back, which will then be shuffled and stacked up for the next time it's to be used. Alright, next, the big shot. If you earn 10 coins on the platform on the first match, match 1, 
the game is not over. Someone can win 2, 3 or 4 coins on the second match and then go on to make you lose 2, 3 or 4 coins from the platform. So the game only ends if you have gotten 10 coins on the platform after match 2 of a round. So keep that in mind. So there we have it. Stick to your created language, be crafty as to which cards you want to match, keep a stern eye on your enemies in case they make an error in saying their kingdom words and successfully stack up 10 of your kingdom coins on the platform. This is a highly entertaining game, yet a very strategic one as well. You get the chance of creating your own language, so get as creative as you can with the words. So crafters, are you the forefather of the island that we know now as Galmundi? Well, it all comes down to two words, Ooga Booga.